take it away. All right. I don't know how I landed uh, with this choice job, but it is really my pleasure to introduce the two Plone release managers. Uh, our first and our longest running release manager is Eric Steele, whom I met at uh, Penn State at Webline when he was working there as a developer um, many years ago, and he's been a release manager since 2009. Um, he currently works for Salesforce, and he was just recently apologizing for the purchase of Slack this week. Um, and Maritz is uh, our release manager also for Plone, and he's been a stalwart member of the Plone release team and the security team for years. And he's a brilliant developer, uh, somebody we totally lean on as a community. So with that, um, here's our speakers. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get the sharing working. There's no way to do this seamlessly, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Is that showing up for everybody? Excellent. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Plone Conference. Um, this is the state of Plone uh, and friends, uh, since Plone has really kind of grown a lot in the last year or so. Um, I wanted to start out just by addressing the elephant in the in the year. Um, it's really been a roller coaster of the year. COVID-19 has thrown everything into complete disarray. Uh, I mean, this is what school looks like for my kids right now. Uh, I learned to play ukulele. Um, we have this random cat that comes by our house daily uh, and yells until we come, come out and pet it. Uh, and to top it all off, my dad decided to grow a mustache, um, which no. Um, one of the real ironies of Plone is that despite being a geographically distributed project, we've traditionally been at our best uh, when we're able to gather together in the same room. You know, the, the kind of um, the general view of, of what an open source community is, is a bunch of people in their underwear coding in the basement all alone. Um, and we, we really make it happen when we can come together, talk with each other, uh, and share our ideas, share our, um, you know, our diversity of opinions and experiences to really help push Plone forward. Um, and, you know, meeting in person really allows us to align on our goals and then get to work. Um, it's a lot easier to argue with each other uh, about how a feature should work uh, when you're face to face um, and you can, you know, yell across the dinner table or share a drink afterwards. Um, the, I, one of my favorite things, um, Alexander Leamy, one of the co-founders said to me was, you know, we, he says, we want to meet you in person and make sure you're not crazy uh, before we give you the keys to the code. Um, but this year has been so dramatically different. Um, we had a few events earlier in the year uh, and then everything fell apart. Um, and since then we've had to make do with doing everything virtually uh, and it really forced us, us to re-examine how we do some things and intervene uh, in some occasional disagreements. Um, I've been talking with many of you over the past few weeks uh, as, we, as I've been preparing for this talk and it's been really tough. It's really reinforced that it'll be more than a year since I've seen um, some of my favorite people in the world. Um, I really wanna say thank you to everybody who worked so hard to make this conference happen. Um, you know, first to the organizers of the original Belgian conference for remaining, remaining flexible during all this uncertainty, uh, to the foundation board for making the tough call to you know, kind of turn this off um, and for six feet up for making this even happen at all. Um, as was said earlier, we have right now 267 people here from 33 different countries. Um, that's likely gone up since earlier today. Um, we've had a number of registrations just this morning. Um, I really wish we could be together, um, but this if this is really all this dumpster fire of a year is gonna allow, then let's make it a good one. Um, so I wanna stop off, start off with talking about some community updates. Uh, one of the major projects the foundation has um, addressed this year was the merger of the Zoop Foundation. Um, so as you know, Zope is kind of an underlying uh, bit of the Plone architecture. It's very important to us. Um, and as part of the, as Python 2 was uh, being sunsetted, we dramatically needed, um, we, we had a dramatic need for Zope to kind of get its act together and get updated in order for us to be able to move forward as well. Um, so we were able to find um, people, developers came out and were, were willing to help us get there, um, which has been fantastic. 
Um, but at the same time, there's really been no meaningful activity from the Zope Foundation as a, as a organization for quite some time. Um, so in early 2019, um, the Zope Foundation membership voted to transfer their assets to the Plone Foundation uh, and close down the Zope Foundation. And this year we were able to um, really finalize that whole process. Um, and so um, some of the things we've done is we've um, aligned the contributor agreements, which make it easier for uh, people to basically use that same agreement to work in both sets of code. Um, we're, we've uh, combined the Zope and Plone security teams so that um, we're, we're able to address issues that come up in Zope uh, as well as what comes up in Plone. Um, we're including their found their membership in the Plone Foundation's democratic uh, infrastructure, um, which includes some voting rights and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, we're, we're kind of uh, really, the most important bit is we're providing this legal security for Plone's code base by transferring the Zope trademark to the Plone Foundation. Um, and it helps us yeah, stay secure from a legal perspective and ensure that development is able to continue into the future. Um, and so we've reached the point where the, the software covered by the Plone, Plone Foundation isn't just Plone, um, but it also includes Zope, Biotina, and Volto uh, projects, um, which brings us to another major project. It's, it's the, uh, the Plone Steering Circle. Um, some of the current issues facing Plone are that uh, Plone as a project has shrunk, um, but Plone as a foundation has grown as, as we've added those, those other three projects in. Um, you know, uh, Guillotina and Volto are, are essentially um, offshoots of work we've done in Plone. Um, and sorry, Ramon, I don't mean to say that as a, any sort of <laughs> insult, um, but I mean, Guillotina was built as, as sort of a um, taking what, what worked in Plone and reimagining it in, 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 from the ground up. Um, uh, but we kind of avoid the risk of fragmentation uh, if we split things off too much. Um, Volto in particular uh, has an opportunity to bring in members uh, from the JavaScript community who have no experience with how Plone and Python uh, do community structure or what, what their values are. Um, so we step forward with this, step forward with this goal um, to really reevaluate, reevaluate how our community structure works. Um, many of what we know is traditional Plone teams uh, were set up nearly 20 years ago uh, when the foundation was founded. Um, a lot of our existing teams are really understaffed and overworked. Uh, we have quite a few people that are serving on multiple teams um, and just getting burnt out from, from that. Uh, and we really want to make sure those uh, voices from outside of the kind of the, the kind of core contributors are, um, are heard uh, and we make our decisions uh, and make them publicly. So uh, one of the initial ways we're starting to do this is uh, through bi-monthly steering committee meetings. Um, these, these kind of grew out of the, the team leaders uh, meetings that we used to have. Uh, I did a very poor job of organizing. Uh, so I'm glad the, the board has, has taken up um, organizing these. Uh, and it's mainly just to keep the teams on track, um, keep them aligned on common goals. Uh, we want to make sure that you know we celebrate their successes publicly, but we also um, publicly acknowledge where uh, where their deficiencies lie, um, and that can really help to make sure that the community community needs knows where their their help is needed. Um, so uh, on Friday there is a uh, open space where they're going to be discussing um, a lot of this. Um, I'm guessing there's going to be a lot more than one open space can allow for. Uh, but it's, it's a good jumping off point um, if you want to get involved. Uh, and there's also a great write-up uh, on plone.org uh, on, the, on the foundation pages about um, their plans for this. Uh, next, I want to talk about marketing. Um, so Rika Pekka has been doing a fantastic job of um, leading the marketing team over the last few months, uh, as well as Kim before him. Um, and so I want to thank them both. Um, so uh, one of the main things we're working on this year is uh, a refresh of the Plone.org uh, website. Um, Plone is a content management system and our website should reflect just how mature yet modern our, our product is. Um, so they're, they're currently making a pass through all the content to uh, just make everything look, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, unify and um, standardize our content. Um, doing some minor theme tweaks right now. Uh, they're planning for a larger overhaul in 2021. Uh, and I was told that they are definitely looking for assistance on this. Uh, there's also uh, a We Are Plone initiative uh, starting, uh, just looking to bring forth the awesomeness of the community uh, through a series of interviews, case studies, uh, and stories about community members and the projects they've worked on. Um, there's also World Plone Day 2021 coming in uh, on April 29th of next year. Um, they're planning a 24-hour live event um, with uh, hosted yet freeform discussion and presentations from almost every time zone. Uh, and there will be a lightning talk about this sometime this week. Uh, and uh, there is also a uh, open space um, session on Friday, um, if you'd like to get involved in that team. Uh, I also want to remind you that there is the annual foundation board meeting uh, Thursday before lightning talks. Uh, I'm told that um, everyone is welcome to listen in, um, but only foundation members may vote. Um, but I think it's definitely worth everyone's time to listen in and, and hear how how plone happens um th this is kind of um yeah so this is gonna be a little rough um so this is uh Dernelis Tremea. um he was one of the most respected members of the Br brazilian pythons open plone communities um and uh, he died ex unexpectedly in 2011. um Dornelis was a founding member of the president of the and president of the associado uh python brazil Hopefully I pronounced that well, Erico, uh, the entity that really promotes and protects Python in Brazil. Um, he's recognized that someone would be generous with his time and would always volunteer to help others. Um, he helped to organize some of the first Plone Sprints, the World Plone Day, the Plone Symposium South America. Um, now the, the Brazilian Plone community already has an award uh, named for him and another uh, community member, uh, Jean Fieri. Um, that that um, uh, awards their members that donate their time and knowledge sharing um, and inclusion. Um, and so, um, and personally, I knew Dornelis is one of the first people to introduce himself to me at a, at a Plone event um, as a complete newbie. Um, it was overwhelming uh, and it was just really nice to have somebody just kind of come forward and say, hi, welcome, and <laughs> uh, just start talking to me. Um, he was really friendly and welcoming, welcoming and a true example of what it means to be a Plonista. Um, so two years ago at the uh, conference in Tokyo, we announced the creation of the Dornelis Tremea uh, Scholarship. Uh, and the goal was to promi provide aid for conference attendants. Um, it's aimed at bringing in new community members and uh, uh, underrepresented segments. Um, so, because we, you know, there are no travel fees this year, uh, this year we were able to use that money to reduce the ticket fees for attendees in developing countries. Um, and at last count, that was, uh, we got, um, we were able to provide that to uh, 24 people to help them attend this year's conference. Um, I talked earlier about the diversity of uh, opinion and experience, um, and we're really working to continue, we're really continuing to work to expand that diversity. Um, Plone shouldn't be shepherded by only those who can afford to travel or travel to or host a sprint or a conference. Um, and so the foundation has really shown a commitment to expanding the voices that influence Plone uh, through their sprint funding and now the scholarship as well. Um, if you're interested in donating, uh, you can make a donation to the, to the Plone Foundation uh, and you can earmark it as the, uh, for the Dornelis Tremaine Scholarship uh, if you're interested in contributing. Uh, there is no good segue from that, so I apologize, um, but we're going to move on to talking about the code. Uh, so uh, Zoop is, of course, the granddaddy of all of Python web frameworks uh, and is our application layer underneath Plone. Um, they this year have released Zoop 5, uh, and I believe 5.1 has come out recently. Um, so they're adding, they've added support for Python 3.6 and above. Uh, they are dropping their support for Z server. Uh, Web dev support is, has been re-added. And there have been some uh, improvements made to the community and templating engine to make it run uh, faster and uh, handle a few different things a bit better. Um, one of those being uh, better support for file transmission. Uh, and it restores the ZMI debug information control panel page. Uh, I want to be sure to mention Guillotina. Um, it was, like I said before, it was originally begun as a reimagining of what um, of the whole Zoop and Plone stack, um, developed entire, as, a, as an entirely separate product 
uh, project with a life of its own uh, from the ground up. Uh, it's really meant to be a framework first. Uh, and they're trying to use existing tooling data, like databases uh, indexing uh, rather than building their own. Um, they want to keep it small, modular, easy to get into, um, and just really a kind of a plug and play system based on the problems you're trying to solve. Um, and so this year they've released Guillotina 6, uh, which has ASGI support, which is a successor to, successor to WSGI, um, added workflows, user registration, uh, and a number of performance and error handling improvements. Um, there's also been a major effort on some front end initiatives for Guillotina. Um, Grange is an Angular SDK framework to build Guillotina and Plo and REST API applications on top. Um, Guillotina React is a simple ZMI for Guillotina to navigate, navigate across projects, uh, objects rather. Uh, and Guillotina Balto is a compatibility layer interface done with the Balto team to allow for a Guillotina backend. Um, there'll be more information on that throughout this week. Uh, the one you probably want to check out is um, on Wednesday, uh, Guillotina Real Uses and Roadmap. Real, <laughs> Real Use Cases and Roadmap. All right, so now on deployment. Um, last year at the conference, uh, we approached Maritz about taking over release management of Plone 4 and 5. Uh, and I am so glad he agreed for, for many reasons. Um, he's been a part of the release team for several years now and has been fantastic in that role. Um, and I mean, he's been just involved in pretty much everything. Uh, and he's been doing so far a, a fantastic job uh, taking over and managing that part of the Plone project. Um, I know this year has been tough on me, but he's had an even more chaotic year. Um, and uh, so I just applaud him for all his hard work. So I'm going to turn it over to Moritz to uh, talk about Plone uh, 4 and 5. Thank you. And let's see if you can hear me and if I can share my screen. It can take a while. Start share. Stop one. Share and then play. Uh, that should be it. Do you see me now? I hope so. Otherwise, someone will scream at me. Uh, so welcome to the state of Plone 4 and 5. I'll focus on those. And I'll, as a theme, I try to talk about stability versus new features. So first, who am I? I am uh, Maurits van Rees. I've lived in the Netherlands for most of my life, but moved to Belgium about two years ago and got married to Fiorella, who you see on the right and to daughter Nika, and since two months, uh, we have a small son called Tobias. So yeah, that has been a hectic year, and I've also moved to a new house this year. Uh, so a lot has happened. Um, I've, I still work for Zest Software in the Netherlands, which in these Corona times means I haven't been there since I think half March this year, but okay. I still work for their online I've worked there for about 15 years, about 15 years on Plone, and the past few years I've been on the security team and also the release team. Uh, so since the beginning of this year, as mentioned, I am the second release manager uh, next to Eric Steele. And the idea is that I focus on the current versions of Plone and getting some regular stable releases out. Uh, one of the first things that I did was to create a Plone release schedule. Uh, this was inspired by the Django release schedule. Of course, Django has it a bit easier because its core is only one package and Plone obviously has lots of packages. So by nature, the Plone release schedule is less predictable. Uh, you can find the schedule and the link should be on the bottom of your screen at plone.org slash download slash release schedule. And oh, I've lost my screen now. Oh. Yeah, I am back. Uh, yeah, this is the place to go to when you are looking for information on what is the latest version within a Plone release. And is this Plone release still supported? When is the next release expected? Uh, as you can see in the green part, the, well, for, uh, that's the maintenance support. So 4.3, 5.0, and 5.1, uh, they are actually not supported anymore. 
except that they still get security support in the in the orange part. Uh, that's until the end of this year, officially, or until Plan 6 comes out. Uh, well, since Plan 6 is not out yet, it will look a bit more like this. And so at least for a couple of months, there's, there will be security support for all the Plone versions. And yeah, Plone 5.2, that's the current stable version that you should use. So about new features uh, versus stability. Uh, we want stable releases, but we also want new release, new features. Uh, that's my daughter Nika over there, who's standing on, on sand, which is at least relatively stable. But yeah, new features are coming in, and there's even a, a bright future on the horizon. But yeah, it might also mean that she gets swept on the foot. And you don't want that for, uh, for, for stable releases. Uh, there is a rule. Uh, if you look at Plone 6, once we have a beta release, no new features should be added. But in practice, most Plone 4 and 5 bug fix releases have had some small new features. And you, so we still do that, but we still try to keep that uh, stable. Uh, let's talk a bit about Plone 4.3. The first release was yeah, seven years ago in April 2013. So it was time to say goodbye to this version. In August, we had the last release that we will ever do for Plone 43. So we said goodbye. And a few releases before that, we already said goodbye to Python 2.6. It might still work, but you should really be using uh, 2.7. Security support uh, is uh, still fine. Just quickly, 4.3.20 had some uh, security hotfixes. The January hotfix was integrated. And there was a hotfix-like uh, product introduced, which you can actually use on all 4.3 versions and Plone 5 versions. Uh, but that's automatically included in all the latest Plone releases. And we've also removed a broken uh, cross-site protection header, which was introduced one release ago. But that actually, due to a typo, it broke some themes. Uh, so that was fixed. Uh, Plone 5.0, that's, uh, that has been out of maintenance a long time ago. So I won't uh, talk about that anymore. It's Plone 5.1, uh, that started in, well, uh, two and a half years ago. And there it was also time to say goodbye in October this year. We had the last release. So it's out of maintenance support. There will not be releases anymore, but security is still okay for, for a little while. And uh, special here is that this is the last release, uh, the last Plone version that still uses SOAP 2. Uh, specific in Plone 5.1.7, well, same security fixes as Plone 4.3. Uh, lots of bug fixes in lots of places for Windows support, front-end things, uh, translations. One other small thing, uh, Plone named file has got on range support. So if a browser asks Plone, it can ask Plone to send the first megabyte of a large file or video and later the next megabyte. It's just a small new feature, which in this case seems uh, fine enough to uh, include. Uh, for stability, uh, one small example in Plone sub requests uh, had a bug fix release, uh, which improved some Python 3 things, which is totally not important for 5.1. Uh, but it seemed to work, but in some cases it was, uh, it actually broke virtual host rewriting in the other rules, at least for one customer where we noticed it. You may not have noticed it. But in our case, uh, yeah, all kinds of links were showing completely wrong. Uh, but so that's one thing where a small new feature in this case, uh, or feature uh, Python 3 uh, support broke it at least for one side of us. We try to avoid that, but that's not always possible. Uh, looking at Plone 5.2, it started yeah, one and a half years ago. Uh, last release is from one month ago, and I expect to do the next release in uh, January. 
And there will be lots more uh, to come. You can use Python 2.7 if you still have to, but preferably use Python 3. Uh, this, of course, uses uh, ZOAP 4, which is still getting lots of bug fixes and some new features as well. And just a small reminder, just uh, the upgrade is from plan 4 or 5 to, to Python 5.2 on uh, to plan 5.2 on Python 2. And after that, you can migrate to Python 3. And it's still in full maintenance and support mode, and it will uh, still be for a long while. Uh, specific to the last releases of this year, there was a security problem in the handling of XML reported by Misaki Kata. Uh, that was fixed, but we decided it was not important enough. Uh, you need to be a manager in order to do something with this. So we decided not to make a security hotfix. Uh, but if you use Collective Easy Forum, a small tip, you should uh, upgrade uh, those versions because it is also affected. Uh, Zoop was upgraded, which means WebDAV is back, if you care about that. So interface has gotten uh, more consistent in a few uh, places, but they did introduce a potential memory leak, which, which was fixed later again in the latest Plum release. Plum REST API, lots and lots of new features. Uh, a small uh, new thing in Plum Up theming and text area in the theming control panel where you can now introduce custom CSS, which can help if you just have a few extra lines that you want to include. And for plan of discussion, there is, uh, I can actually show a picture. In the moderate comments page, you can now uh, mark a comment as spam or reject it. And you can use that to have someone else uh, go through the spam list and rejected list for a second opinion. Or you can maybe hook it up some, to some automatic spam detection. Uh, for stability in Plum 5.2, uh, that's mostly ZOOP 4.4, had some changes that seemed fine enough uh, around templates. Uh, and well, some fixes were needed in 4.5, but yeah, not everything works as it used to. Uh, for example, the first line you see, uh, the test keyword is no longer supported, so you need to do a more Pythonic way of uh, spelling uh, the same thing with conditions, which works in, in all the soaps as well, luckily. Uh, the repeat syntax has changed uh, a, a bit, at least you can uh, the repeat slash widget slash index, if you are repeating over that, that works in all soap versions. Uh, and then Plum 5.2.3, there's some more fixes uh, for that. But yeah, if you go to 5.2.2 or 2.3, you might run into some problems. I think I'll skip a bit here, but uh, just to yeah, semantic versioning, uh, just looking at version numbers is not always enough. Set we see auto includes 0 0.40 at a breaking change, uh, dropping Python 3.4 support. Uh, we don't care as Plone because we don't support it. And a new feature at support for Python 3.8. Uh, but in both cases, there was no actual code change. So that's completely safe. And in other cases, a bug fix release can break things. And well, for Zoop, I think for the time, I'll skip the, the details here. But yeah, there were some good releases and some that looked good, but turned out to be bad. And the last release is pretty good again. And I'll go to my last slide for the future of Plone 5. You could say 5.2 is a stable branch, so please do not do any new features at all, only bug fixes. But if we would have done that from the start, that would have meant yeah, an older SOAP 4.1, uh, a less fast SOAP interface, no range support, a uh, very old Plone REST API, etc. And for the future, uh, there will be more bug fixes and features in ZOOP. Uh, it's maybe a question, uh, will our tiny MCE version still work in modern browsers in half a year? Uh, same for jQuery, do we need to update that to version three because we are at version one still. So you could think about doing a Plone 4.3 version 
to include changes uh, like this and keep 5.2 really only bug fixes. But yeah, such a version would distract from the Plum 6 work and it would be confusing. So we really don't want to do that. And the plan for some of those changes like jQuery and maybe TinyMCE uh, that could be done in an optional uh, mockup version and Plum Static Resources version that would then not be included automatically in 5.2 by default, but if you know what you're doing, then you could use uh, those versions. So keep an eye out on newer versions uh, for those. But uh, for developers on the core, uh, the best place for new features is Plone 6. And uh, that's what uh, Eric Steele will uh, talk about more now. Over to you, Eric. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I uh, kind of get the easy job of showing off the new, the new and exciting stuff. Um, so I, <laughs> I uh, really appreciate Moritz taking the time to go through and explain uh, exactly what we're trying to do with the, the, the bug fix releases. Uh, okay, back my slides. All right, uh, hopefully I'm displaying correctly. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about Plon 6 quickly. Um, so Plon 6 really on the back end uh, is going to be largely built on the promises we made in Plon 5.2. Um, Plon 5.2, if you remember correct, uh, remember was um, the addition of uh, Python 3 support, uh, really going as far in on dexterity as we could, uh, and so and uh, upgrading Zope. Um, so, so Plone 6 is, is going to build on that, like I said, um, so we'll have uh, Zope 5, uh, we're going to, uh, archetypes will see a, an end of life, uh, it does not work on Python 3, so it just goes away, uh, because we're dropping Python 2 support. Uh, Python 2 is no longer supported by the Python Foundation, so we will not be uh, moving ahead with it. Uh, and uh, another feature that's already in there, um, this uh, is a removable portal quick installer. It's uh, based on some work that Moritz did in 5.1, I believe, uh, to really improve the way we, we install, upgrade, uh, and un uninstall uh, add-ons in Plone. Um, so all, all of this should really be trivial if you're hosting a site on Plone 5.2. Um, we're just removing the things that you're already no longer using. Um, and if you're not quite there yet, uh, it's just a reminder that that's going away. Uh, the front end is really where you're going to see the most obvious changes, and that's happening in two ways. Uh, one is something we're calling uh, LTS or long-term su long support uh, theming, and the other is through Balto. Um, so we're really considering um, uh, Plone 6 to be a long-term support release. We want to keep it around as long as possible, um, and that's made possible by some of the things that we've set up uh, through the previous releases. Um, so we're really pushing that new sites should plan on using Balto, uh, but there will be con continued support of server-side rendering uh, and diazo theming. Um, there's a, a Thursdays, essentially all of Thursdays track one is going to be talking about how what, what we're doing to modernize Plone's classic UI. I'm going to touch on it briefly here, um, but we're, we're calling it uh, Plone Classic. Um, uh, so there's going to be a new uh, updates to the Barcelonetta theme, um, making it use Bootstrap 5, uh, reducing a lot of the custom markup and styling, um, updates to the resource registry. Um, dirty little secret is the resource registry changes were pretty much uh, a last minute fix for some problems we had in Plone 5, uh, Plone 5 uh, when we realized that uh, certain ways mockup was gonna make us work. Um, so they're really setting forward to kind of correct those problems uh, and uh, really simplify the way bundles work, uh, make it easier to understand and work with and really better match what um, the developer expectations are. Uh, and there'll be some updates to mock-up as well, um, to rewriting it to use um, ES6, ES6 imports instead of require JS. Uh, there's gonna be some caching improvements and dynamic module loading. Uh, Volto is the other uh, piece of this. Um, so Volto is a React-based front end uh, for both Plone and Guillotina. 
uh, and it is compatible with both Plone 4, 5, and 6. Um, they, they, one of the things I really like about the way they set up the, um, the Volta project is they, they uh, defined a set of, of principles uh, that basically all development on the project should follow. Um, that's approachability, putting the developer experience first, uh, customization and extensibility, having a well-defined UI and UX, which is something I've been begging for for years. Um, this is built on some work that uh, Albert Casado has done uh, and the Pasanaga UI. Uh, really don't over-engineer things, uh, have one way of doing things rather than several. Uh, and uh, the front and back end are meant to be decoupled, uh, focusing on UI and UX implementation uh, and upcoming challenges in the frameworks being used. Uh, and really sticking with the semantic versioning process. Um, one of the things that really stood out to me when talking to Victor last week uh, was when he said, we're not alone anymore. Um, it, you know, uh, projects always start out as, as one or two people working on something. Uh, and if, you know, when they catch on and gain momentum, um, that's always just an amazing feeling. Um, I, <laughs> I taught my kids to ride bikes last year um, and just remember that, that that feeling of pushing them and letting go. Um, and I think that's really where, uh, really where Volto has, has come, to, come at this point. Um, so it's, yeah, it's no longer just a handful of people, but it's a community who's jumped in to help with uh, development. Um, that's both just individuals and entire companies. Um, and that's really shown uh, from what they've been able to build this year and the pace at which they've been able to do so. Um, so they released Volto 4 in March. Uh, they called it the maturity release. Uh, and they've released Balto 10 last week. Um, and, you know, that, that to, as, as a Plone person, that seems like a huge jump, but just looking over the changes they're making, they're, they're very incremental uh, and they're very um, dedicated at pointing out exactly when a breaking change is happening. Uh, and uh, those are not happening very often. So this isn't like a complete framework we write every week uh, like we've seen uh, in the past with some of our JavaScript work. Um, so I've been really uh, fascinated to watch just how they've been able to do this. Um, so they're, they're, they're iterating at a much faster pace. Their uh, incremental release is happening multiple times per week. Um, and so like front end bugs are being fixed pretty much right away. Um, and yeah, this is, this is measured development, semantically versioned. All the changes are well-defined and upgrade project guides are published. Um, and a lot of what they've been able to do is really because we put this API layer in there between Flow and Vault in the front end. Um, and like I said last year, the API is the contract. Um, we have we have Flow and REST API providing that contract between the front and back ends, uh, which allows just to really decouple the development cycles. Uh, one of the ongoing issues in Plone is that when we really tightly couple the front and back end development, our front end development, our front end work is really likely to be outdated by the time we actually get the Plone release out. Um, and by the same token, we the back end can now remain a much more measured in the in how we change our underlying architecture. Um, major Plone releases can remain stable for a far longer period of time uh, if we're not having to constantly refresh our, our embedded front end implementation. Um, as an example, why this contract is so important, uh, Volto works on Plone 4. Um, so if you build a, plone, a site on Plone 4 with a Volto front end, your upgrade path to Plone 5 is purely a back end up only upgrade. That API contract doesn't change between the two, uh, only the implementation, impl implementation underneath. Um, so uh, I'm, we're, we're close on time, so I'm going to run through some uh, things real quick uh, and show a couple demos. But uh, so there's a new, several new blocks out, uh, which are the base unit of page layout. Uh, listing and table of contents uh, and lead image. Uh, they're using uh, Plone's transforms engine in the API layer to allow for pluggable and orderable data transformations when serializing and deserializing de JSON, uh, which is uh, has a lot of potential for just being amazing. Uh, there's multilingual support, lazy loading, uh, which reduces bundle sizes, um, column ordering to the folder contents view, uh, adding the ability to use a completely different CSS framework by separate, they've separated the CMS UI from the theme UI. Uh, so for example, uh, by default, it uses semantic UI. You can now completely just swap in uh, bootstrap instead. Uh, and you can now uh, set uh, in 
sorry, enforced layouts for content types. Um, so I want to show that bit. Um, so this is so let's go ahead and create a new uh, dexterity content type. So th this is Volto, uh, the new front end. Uh, so I'm going to create just a simple content type. We'll call it my content type. Um, and we'll go in and we'll change the behaviors. This is all stuff you've seen in the um, dexterity already, just with the new UI. Uh, so I'm going to give it the lead image um, behavior. Uh, and then what we can do is actually set a default layout for this. Um, so I'm going to enable the, uh, the blocks um, behavior. Uh, so the vault, the, the editor allows us to add new uh, layout blocks. Uh, so I'm going to create a byline and we'll go ahead and put in a, uh, some body text. And we'll add a, uh, our lead image field. And so these are just providing um, some default values on the page layout, so that when my editors go in, these are already these these uh, uh, these content blocks are already pre pre populated. Uh, so I'm going to set a couple of these to be required, uh, and I'm going to change these at the byline and lead image to have a fixed position, uh, and we'll we'll leave that body text as as uh, movable, just to, as a demo. So obviously, I'm not great at page layouts. Um, not all your content editors are either. So this gives you the ability to kind of keep them from making your site completely ugly if you if you want to. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I've created a new uh, instance of this content type. So call it my new page. We'll go ahead and add a lead image. Um, th this is the band Plone that we're named after. Uh, they just put out a new release this year. So uh, you should probably check that out. Uh, it's definitely going to play havoc with our marketing. Um, but you notice that I, so those, those fields are already there. You notice I can only move that bottom, uh, that bottom block and I can still add more because I allowed that on this page. So this is going to give you a lot of, um, a lot of flexibility in what you can allow your editors to, um, do you, they can have full control, no control at all, or, or somewhere in between. Um, yeah, so, uh, we have multilingual support, uh, lazy loading, uh, which um, quite a um, performance optimization. Uh, uh, yeah, I already talked about those. Uh, and the other thing uh, I want to show off is uh, block display variations. So um, in this case, I'm going to create uh, a new folder and upload some images just quickly. Uh, so this is a new folder contents view. Um, yeah, we'll add a new folder called images. And I'm going to do a bulk upload here. So I'm just going to drag and drop these images from my desktop um, and hit, hit next. Um, this is, I, I usually wind up having to edit my plone videos just to cut out some time. This is all real time. Um, so that, that upload went from here to Germany super quickly. Um, I'm just really impressed with the snappiness of the UI. Um, yeah, so I'm going to add a listing. Uh, uh, view here. So these are our standard, like has the same collection uh, behaviors. So I can say, you know, just give me all images. I can add a criteria to say uh, which uh, which folder I want to uh, pull those from. So I'm going to pull it from those that images folder. Um, so by default, this is using uh, just a, a regular listing view. Um, so this will show um, any type of content in in a in an order. Uh, but we can also switch it to um, a, a different switch that same block to a different uh, view, which allows us to, use, in this case, have a, a gallery view. So we could do things like you know, sliders, uh, tabular views, that sort of thing, um, and basically take the exact same content and just display it in different ways um, and add that ability to change that per layout. So uh, add, there's been a lot of work on add-ons. Um, I don't have time to talk about them now, um, but you can check out that that awesome Balto repo in the collective uh, has a lot more information. There's a unified style guide, which uh, which I mentioned earlier with the Pasanaga, which is uh, basically in helping to ensure us a, a similar look and feel across the entire platform, whether you're adding add-ons or not. Uh, and I hear there is a refresh coming this year. Um, 
All those demos were from uh, the volta.kickconcept.com website. Uh, so you can go and check that out now. It refreshes, I believe, hourly um, and try it out right now. Uh, and Victor has a talk immediately after mine um, that I recommend watching uh, where he's going to talk about all of this. Uh, there are multiple companies using this in production now. Uh, and it's time to, really, as a community, it's time to start trying it out uh, and really making it as amazing as, as it has the potential to be. Uh, yep, so that's uh, the state of Plone and Friends. Um, thank you. And with that, uh, I want to thank Eric and Maritz for a great keynote. Um, it was really fascinating for me to watch even a more recent demo of Alto than I'd seen before and to hear all the plans that Maritz has in place for, I guess, uh, for older versions of Plone and our scheduled roadmap for releases. So with that, thank you very much to the both of you. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the more work that you're going to be doing for us. Thanks. Thanks.